Hi everyone, I'm Abby Sharp from Abby's Kitchen. Welcome back to our series, Enlightened by Intuitive Eating. In our last video, we discussed principle number seven of intuitive eating, cope with your emotions without using food. So if you haven't watched that video, go check it out, and of course, come back to watch this one. Also, a big thank you to Alyssa Rumsey, intuitive eating dietitian, for reviewing this episode. As always, I'll leave links to her social media and her website so that you guys can contact her for some one-on-ones. Now, before we get started, I want to flag that this content may not be for all of my viewers, so feel free to take what you find valuable and leave what you don't. Also, don't forget to follow the intuitive eating journey along with me through Evelyn Triboli and Elise Resch's book, which I have linked below. Finally, my general disclaimer that the information in this video is for education and entertainment purposes only, and you should always speak to your healthcare provider about your unique healthcare case. Let's get into a reader question. Dear Abby, I really, really want to practice intuitive eating, but I'm in residence at college on a meal plan. So my food options are limited to really whatever the plan says or what is offered that day. How can I eat intuitively if I can't choose the food that is offered? Okay, so this is a really great question. Well, of course it would be great if we were always able to eat exactly what we felt like or what we wanted in the moment. This just isn't always the case. Intuitive eating is all about using your body and your brain to make decisions. So in this instance, where you're limited based on what the dining hall is serving, if there's nothing being served that you're really craving, think instead, what can I have that I at least like the taste of, even if I don't necessarily love it? And that will keep me feeling full, satisfied, and feeling good in my body. Not every single meal is going to be the most delicious and satisfying, but it still serves a purpose, to fuel and nourish your body. Once you leave residence and are on a budget, and this really applies to anyone on a budget, you may run into some very similar struggles. For example, it's not feasible for everyone to eat whatever they're feeling like in the moment. This could be, very likely, just too expensive. In some cases, intuitive eating can be a bit of a privileged thing. If you're struggling to put food on the table, it's probably not feasible to be overly attentive to your hunger, fullness, and satisfaction cues all the time. And that is totally okay. But if you are in a place to do so, there are some steps you can take to practice some of the different principles of intuitive eating, even if you are on a budget. So intuitive eating is all about allowing yourself permission to eat whatever you want, whenever you want, but also knowing that this may not always be an option, whether that's because the food is inaccessible financially, seasonally, or locally, or because, you know, it just won't feel good in your body right now. When you're on a budget, it's about making the best food decisions that you can for you and your body, while also respecting the fact that you can't spend unlimited cash on the foods that you want. In this case, I encourage you to focus on a few principles of intuitive eating that we've already covered. So number one, respect your hunger. Find foods that feel satisfying in your belly, that taste great, and that don't blow your budget. There are so many satiating filling foods that are also naturally nutritious and inexpensive. This may mean that you play around with cooking more at home and using more inexpensive foods like frozen vegetables, grains, oatmeal, canned foods like beans, maybe things like tomatoes or in-season produce, which of course tends to be cheaper. Number two, respect your fullness. When on a budget, you may be concerned about food waste. So to avoid this, have containers available so that you can easily store your leftovers. Freeze food that you don't plan on eating right away or perhaps give some of the leftover food to your roommate and your neighbor and swap. Number three, discover the satisfaction factor. Satisfaction is all about taste and flavor, but also texture, temperature, visual appeal, smell, etc. So for example, maybe you're craving beef, which of course we know is more expensive. So why not make a stir fry with lots of beans and some grains or rice, and then a smaller amount of meat tossed throughout. You'll have a really hearty, satisfying meal that satisfies your hunger, stays within budget, but also satisfies that taste for meat. These are just a few things to keep in mind while on a budget. At the end of the day, you have to focus on what you have time and energy for. It is possible to eat intuitively, even on a budget, without feeling restricted. 
Okay, so on that note, let's move on to the video. So in this video, we're gonna be discussing principle number eight, respect your body. If you get anything out of today's video, I want it to be this. If you're at war with your body, you'll have a really hard time being at peace with yourself and with food. So even if you soak up all the information from all of these videos, if you aren't respecting your body, then it will become difficult to fully make peace with food. When we think about our bodies, we openly accept that certain things are a result of genetics. Hair color, skin color, shoe size, height, these are all things that are ultimately beyond our control and that we are also just naturally born with. We also recognize that we have different tolerances to food and may metabolize food differently. So if we can accept that our bodies are so different from one another, why can't we accept that the size or shape of our bodies can be too? And of course, a massive cause for this body insecurity can be linked to diet culture and the diet industry. I mean, these days we're just bombarded by ads, Instagram images, and public figures who do not represent the typical person, as we are all just so different. Less than 5% of the population actually looks like most of who we're seeing in the media right now. So it can be really easy to compare ourselves to others and create these unrealistic expectations of what we should look like. Not to mention there's the widespread use of Photoshop. I mean, it's just no wonder then that people feel inferior and insecure with their imperfect bodies. They have to compete with something that isn't even real. Now to make matters worse, we have thousands of wellness and, and fitness influencers out there, many of which boast that one's body is the sole result of willpower and determination. That all it would take is properly following their unique proprietary program, and you too can have a thin waist, sculpted arms, and a toned butt for life. Now, I have to say, I absolutely love that more influencers are being more open and honest about their fitness and health journeys with many, including some amazing YouTubers like Stephanie Buttermore, letting us see some of the unhealthy undertones of the wellness world. Still, with Facetune and filters, we are still a long ways away from true body acceptance. And with social media reaching the fingertips of young children, the social pressure to have the perfect body and to look a certain way is starting before many kids even hit puberty. Now, with that being said, <laughs> I could spend this whole video pointing blame at the diet industry for their utmost disregard and disrespect for people with different bodies, or I can help you get past their message and respect your body for the amazing, amazing machine that it is. After all, when has loathing your body really helped you? Has dwelling on tiny imperfections really helped motivate you to be your healthiest self? Chances are, no, not for any long lasting changes at least. It usually just further reinforces a poor relationship with your body, self and food. A negative shame cycle so many of us have fallen into over and over again, never seeing the results that we're looking for. So let's ditch the negative self-talk and really get to enjoying our bodies at any stage in our life, no matter what weight or size we are. Keep in mind that this is not an easy journey and you're not going to magically love every part of your body after finishing this video. It can take weeks, months, or even years to be more accepting of your body. And even when you are, not every day or every stage will be butterflies and roses. This is where body respect comes in because it's impossible to take care of something that you hate or don't respect. So instead of thinking of loving your body, can you instead maybe work on respecting it? And I'm not saying you have to disregard your body or health. In fact, I'm actually saying the opposite. The goal here is to appreciate your body for its amazing abilities and to then respect it by making decisions around food, movement, stress management, etc., that actually take care of your body. Just like a friend or family member or partner, you don't have to love everything about them in order to show them love and respect. So respecting your body means to show it care and meet its basic needs, even if you're not a complete fan of it every single day. On another note, there are a lot of people who are in smaller bodies but who are not physically or mentally healthy. So what I want you to remember is that regardless of your current size, 
Adopting health-promoting behaviors like eating nourishing foods, engaging in exercise, utilizing positive coping skills, and getting enough sleep all can improve your health and well-being regardless of what you weigh or what your BMI is. So let's talk about how to respect your body. There are two main things that you need to respect your body. Number one, make it comfortable, and number two, provide its basic needs. Now, regardless of your size, you deserve to have your basic needs met and to be comfortable. If these basic needs are not met, then you end up more disconnected from your body. Your body starts to distrust you and you can then feel kind of distrustful of your body. So here are some examples of basic needs that your body deserves. My body deserves to be fed on a regular basis, to be treated with dignity, to be dressed comfortably in whatever I may choose, to be touched affectionately and with respect, and to move comfortably. Now, in order to feel comfortable, we need to get a little bit personal here. If you are new to the channel, I'm not afraid to get honest and personal with you. So I want you to think of the last time that you bought yourself new clothes that made you feel good. Now, in a lot of cases, when people aren't comfortable and respectful of their body, they tend to wear maybe old clothes that don't fit them properly, whether those clothes are too big or too small. But here's the thing, buying clothes that actually fit our figure can do wonders. So instead of trying to squeeze into a pair of jeans or wear a sweater that is like two times too big, I encourage you to find clothes that fit your current body. That simple act of wearing clothes that fit your figure can seriously transform the way that you see yourself. When you feel comfortable physically, it can help you feel more comfortable mentally. And I understand that there are financial constraints that have to be considered here. I mean, if you're unable to go buy new clothes, see if clothes can be hemmed or fitted to fit you better. Check out thrift stores, which have tons of really cute clothes at a discounted price. Or do a clothing swap with others who are around the same size. The key here is to not wait until you have achieved your new body to dress yourself in clothes that feel good. Time and time again, waiting until you're at your dream body is like watching a kettle boil. So live in the now and treat your body with respect as it is in this very moment. Now, in addition to being comfortable and meeting your basic needs, there are also some other things that you can do to respect your body. One is to change the way you assess your body. If you're struggling with body image and trying to repair your relationship with your body and food, it might be time to put the scale away. Too much emphasis and value is placed on the Earth's gravity, our body weight. In my experience, those who are truly happy and respectful of their body don't weigh themselves often. I mean, the scale really is a tool for a chronic dieter. It's a game of up and downs with really no winner at the end. In fact, Weight and body mass index, BMI, have been widely criticized for their lack of focus on muscle tone, bone mass, and other factors that influence weight. Research continues to show that a change in healthy behaviors can significantly improve health, even if the weight on the scale doesn't actually change. Also, get rid of anything that makes you feel like crap. I mean, for example, if you have a pair of jeans that are too tight, donate them. Even if you ditch the scale, you may keep trying to put these jeans on, hoping to see some progress. So anything that makes you feel chronically bad about your body has really no place in your intuitive eating journey. Next, I would say quit the body check game. When you walk into a room full of people, what is the first thing that you do? For most people, you scan the room and you make observations. For a lot of people, especially those who don't have a great relationship with their body, they might do a quick scan of everybody else's bodies and their appearances and compare them to their own body. You may think to yourself, am I the biggest one here? Or how does my body appearance compare with others? This game that you play is really, really harmful, especially if you start playing comparison with people you don't even know. Remember, there are a lot of factors inherent in someone's body size and type. All people have different needs and comparing yourself to others is truly counterproductive as your needs are more than likely very different than theirs. You really can't judge a book by its cover. So try to catch yourself when you find yourself comparing yourself to others and put the focus back on yourself. 
Next, I would say don't compromise for the big event. If you have a special event coming up, let's say a school reunion, it's totally normal to want to look your best. Technically, it's a subtle form of body checking like I just mentioned, but we all have a tendency to succumb to the pressure of looking good for others. For many, this means participating in a quick weight loss diet to achieve your desired look fast. Just as I've mentioned in previous videos, crash diets rarely result in sustainable changes. And we risk not only damaging our relationship with food and mental well-being, but also our metabolism and overall health. Here's the thing to remember. There will always be a special event. There will always be a wedding to attend, an anniversary or a reunion. And if we constantly compromise our health for a special event, we will be cycling through unhealthy behaviors all year round. My recommendation isn't sexy or quick, but this is why I believe you're much better off to invest the time in fostering a healthy relationship with food and your body rather than focusing on short-term results. Now, this doesn't mean you can't look good for your big event. As I mentioned earlier, it's, it's often about how you approach and respect your body. So buy an outfit that fits your current body and that you feel really good in. Don't buy a dress that is guaranteed to upset you when you put it on. You know, do your hair and makeup nicely, some way that kind of brings you joy, maybe accessorize with fun earrings or shoes and own your body. The best looking person in the room is always the person who feels best in their body and exudes confidence. Next, let's stop body bashing. This one is very hard to stop doing because it's considered normal in our culture to point out the things that we don't like about ourselves and often what we don't like about others. Ugh, I have too much cellulite on my thighs or my arms are so jiggly. I can't stand my double chin. Ugh, my stomach is so gross. I hate my stretch marks, etc. I bet it's a lot. This may seem unconventional, but I want you as part of your homework to count the number of times that you degrade your body in a single day. You may be shocked at how many times you look in the mirror or the window and make a hurtful comment to yourself. And these comments do hurt, especially when they come from someone as important in your life as yourself. As you go through your intuitive eating journey, I really encourage you to surround yourself with positive, uplifting thoughts and people. So instead of focusing on parts of your body that you don't like, I want you to find what you do like about yourself or at the very least are indifferent about. Start simple and go from there. For example, maybe you really like your eye color. Continue to remind yourself of that because these small positive beliefs can help transform your overall appraisal of yourself over time. Every time you catch yourself being negative about your body, replace it with a kind and compassionate statement. So here are some examples. Ugh, my eyes look so saggy can become, I really like my hair today. My thighs are too big can become, my arms are so strong, they're strong enough to pick up my kids. Those are just two simple examples, but if you have a hard time saying things that you like about your body, and that's totally normal and part of this growing process, I want you to phrase your negative comment in a respectful, practical way. So, for example, the I hate the cellulite on my legs could become, I'm really fortunate that I have strong legs that move my body around. Or, I am so out of shape it's disgusting can become, my body got me to work today, played with my kids, and finished all of the chores in the house. So yeah, it was hard to exercise today, but there is always tomorrow. Now, finally, I want you to stop the body shaming with yourself and with your friends. Don't allow yourself to participate in degrading comments about yourself or anyone else. Now, let's talk about respecting body diversity. As a society, we celebrate diversity in many forms, yet we still really struggle with body size diversity. Just like some people are tall and some are short, some people have big feet, some people have small feet, some people are in smaller bodies naturally, and some people are naturally in bigger bodies. We all come in different shapes and sizes, yet we tend to be critical of ourselves if we don't look a certain way. This is what is taught to us by diet culture. As I mentioned earlier, there are so many things that contribute to body sizes that are different, the main one being genetics. We need to stop assuming that every person is in a larger body because they're doing something wrong. This is a conversation that deserves more time, but 
Prejudice against larger bodies is a massive issue in our society. And this extends beyond the social world into the medical field. In fact, research has shown that weight stigma, that is discrimination or stereotyping of someone based on the size of their body, has a bigger impact on our overall health than just the food that we eat. Weight stigma contributes to poor health for many reasons. For example, people in larger bodies often have experiences of going to doctors and being shamed for their weight, which can then lead them to preventing or delaying seeking out medical care. Too often, some medical professionals ignore a person's chief complaint and zone in solely on weight as the root cause. So you may have come to see your doctor for an earache, and yet the recommendation somehow becomes to lose weight. That is unacceptable. As healthcare professionals, we have a duty to treat illness regardless of size. And as humans, we have a duty to treat every body with equal respect. If you're struggling with this, there are resources available to search for a physician who doesn't promote this weight normative care. And you can search at hayescommunity.com to find one of those physicians. Finally, I want you to say goodbye to the fantasy. Now, this may be really hard to do and may take a long time to accept, but a key step in respecting your body is coming to terms with the idea that you may not lose the amount of weight or be the small size that you really, really want to be. It's hard for people to hear, but your body just may not be designed to be that particular size or that particular weight that you really want to be. You might not be meant to be the size that you were when you were 20 years old. Your set point may simply be set at a higher notch than your friends. Unfortunately, not coming to terms with this can really interfere with our satisfaction with our life. In many cases, focusing on modifiable behaviors like eating, movement, and stress reduction can help to improve health even if the size of your body doesn't change that much. It may take time to mourn the loss of your dream body, but I really want you to take a second to appreciate the new opportunities that you have in front of you. Think about the price that you've already paid just trying to get this body. Time, energy, emotions, money, health. By saying goodbye to the fantasy and finding respect for the body that you do have, you're opening the door to living a more peaceful, happy life and an opportunity to better engage in self-care. Again, I want to emphasize that I am not saying that losing weight is being disrespectful to your body. In fact, by respecting your body, you may be engaging more in healthy eating practices, gentle movement, better stress management, better sleep, etc., all of which may cause you to lose weight. I'm just saying, in order to make changes in your life, this all needs to come from a place of respecting your body, not from a place of hating it. Now for your homework this week, I want you to find two things that you like about your body, or at least are very neutral about. And whenever you're about to criticize your body, I want you to reframe it and remind yourself of the things that you really do like. Remember, these things take time and you don't wanna rush the process but even little shifts can add up over time. Again, continue to work on all of these steps throughout your intuitive eating journey and stay tuned for our next video on principle number nine, exercise, feel the difference. So folks, on that note, that is all for today. Don't forget to give me the thumbs up if you liked this video. Leave me a comment below if you have any questions that you want me to answer in an upcoming episode of Enlightened by Intuitive Eating. Subscribe to the channel and I'll see you next time on Abby's Kitchen. Bye.